So when you're using Reaper, you probably want to import files like audio or video files into your project. And one of the best ways to do that is using the Media Explorer. Now we could do it right from your hard drive. Set a folder right here. I could just drag a file and drop it either down here or over here. And that imports it into Reaper. But using the Media Explorer, there's a lot more features that are more useful for this process. So to get to it, we'll go up here to the View menu and choose Media Explorer. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's all Control X, and on Mac, it's Option Command X. And if we choose it, it opens up this window. Now, right now, this window is floating. If you want to dock it, we could hit this button, and it goes down here to my dock. Or we could drag the tab from here right out like this, and it goes back to floating. You could use it whichever way you prefer. So the Media Explorer looks like this. And we can see all our files in this dialog. We can go up here to our project directory and see all the files that are already in our project. So if we want to use them again, we can just drag them and drop them to tracks or below tracks to create new tracks. But it's even more useful for files that are not in our project. So if I go back here, I have a folder I created called Sound Library. This is where I keep all my samples and loops that I like to use in my projects. So because of that, I probably want to save this as a shortcut so it'll be over here on the left side all the time. So I can right click it, add to shortcut list, and now it shows up here all the time where I can see all my samples and loops that I created for this purpose. So if I close this window and open it back up, it's always going to be right here or wherever you put it. Now we can also search for files right over here. So if I type in kick, I'll see all the files in that directory with kick in their name. Or we could type in snare and see the same thing. All the files with snare in their name show up. Now if I go back in to my sound library, we can see I have folders created for different groups of sounds. Like down over here, I have a kicks folder. And if I open it up, I have other folders within it for these kicks or these. But if I wanted to make this a little easier, let's go back out. I could choose this folder. And instead of creating a shortcut for it, we could right click it and choose to make a database from this folder. And what that's going to do is put the name of the folder over here, but create a database with all the samples in those folders. So we could see the name of the folder over here and the name of the file or sample over here. So you can scroll through and we're not going to see any folders, just the samples or loops within those folders. So it's a little more useful than simply saving a shortcut for a folder. Let's create another one down here for my snares. Again, I have multiple folders in the snare folder, so it's more useful to right click it, make a database from the folder, and have all the files listed like this with the folder name and the file name of the sample right here. Now we could also see up here different columns to choose from. We can list things by their name, by favorites or mark them, by their size. And if we scroll over here, we can see different options or metadata we could choose. If we play a file, it's automatically going to be marked, letting us know we played it. But if we want to list it as a favorite, let's choose this one, this one, and this one. Now we can right click it and set it as a favorite. If we reopen that window, view it by favorites, and just see our favorites up here. Or we can right click it and uncheck our favorites, and they go back to the way they were before. And like I said before, we could add metadata to any of the files. Let's go to our kicks. Let's put it above our snares, change the order. And let's say we like this kick, this kick, and this kick. And we want to attach this to a certain artist. We could right click it and go down here to edit metadata tag. 
and choose artist or any other option we want, let's choose artist. Then we can name it based on the project or artist we want to assign to these samples. Let's name it Joe. And we can see over here, Joe is listed as the artist. Now it's not in there permanently. If we want to write it to the file, we can right click it and go down here and write edited metadata to the media. And now it's written into the file. So at any point, we could reopen this window and just search by the artist name. And those files are going to show up. The file is based on that artist's name. So it's a great way of cataloging different files for different artists or albums or genre or comments or BPM or keys or any custom tags we want. Now, by default, we're going to hear the files when we click on them. If that's not working for you, make sure you turn on Auto Preview right here. If it's off, we're not going to hear the files, although we still can by using our arrows. Hit the right arrow to hear it, and hit the left arrow to stop hearing it. And we can go up and down to choose which sample we want to hear. We'll leave this on, and we're going to hear it by default, just by clicking on it. And we could also loop while auditioning the sounds. Let's choose a folder right here with some drum loops. If I choose this option right here, the file's going to loop when we audition it. But we could always stop it by hitting the left arrow and restarting it with the right arrow. Now, by default, we hear in the sound through our main speakers, which you can see right here with the routing button. It's going out, output left and output right. We could choose different outputs over here, but we could also preview it through tracks. So let's say we want to hear it in context. Let's create a new track. Let's go to the effects on that track, and let's add a reverb, which looks like this. So now we have reverb on this track. So with this track selected, we can click on the routing button and choose to hear or addition our sounds through that track so we can hear it in context. So if I choose it, let's go back to our kicks. If I hear a sound, we could hear it has reverb on it which is playing through this track. So it's a great way of hearing our samples or loops in context. Playing through the track, we're going to import it to. Now right down over here is the volume we can audition our sounds. So if we bring it down, we hear the sounds quieter or louder. But by default, if we import them, it's not going to bring this volume into it. So if I bring this down and drag this file down here and drop it, the file's volume is zero. It hasn't changed to the addition volume. If you want that, just right click over here, go down here to options and choose apply preview volume to inserted media item. This is off by default, but if we choose it and adjust the audition volume and bring the sound in, we can see it adjusts the volume of that sound based on the volume we changed over here. But again, this is off by default. So in this folder, I have some drum loops. And if I drag them in, they're going to drag in based on their own tempo. So we drag it in and drop it right here. We can see that the tempo doesn't match our project. It's way off. Now we can stretch it by holding down Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and dragging it like this. Now it matches the project, but we could do this 
before we import it at all. We could choose these options up here, which is going to match the tempo to the project. So if I choose this option and listen to the loop, now we're hearing it at the project tempo. Well, this one, they're playing back at the project tempo, which we could adjust by doubling it or cutting the tempo in half. But they're still locked to the project tempo. Once we turn this off, now they're independent again. So there's a few different ways we can import our files using the Media Explorer. Like I showed you, we could drag it and drop it below the tracks over here, and that adds it like this. Or we could drag it down here and just place it on the bar we want, bar one or bar two, and that's still gonna create a new track. Or we could import it to an already created track. Let's create a new track by double clicking over here. Now we could drag this file and drop it on this track. Again, either here or here or anywhere we want. And we can see by default, the file we drop is going to auto name the track. Before it was unnamed and after it changes the name to the name of that file. It's pretty handy. Now we could also right click the file and insert it into the project here, insert it based on a time selection. Let's create a time selection down here, make a new track and right click this file, choose to insert it into the time selection, stretching it and looping it to fit. And that puts it right here, time stretched based on the time selection we created. Or we can insert it on a new track like we did before or insert it into a sample player. Let's try out a different sample. Let's try this one. We could right click it, insert it into sample player and choose to do it on a new track. And what that's gonna do is it creates a new track with resample 5000 as a plugin on this track. We could play it. Or we could trigger it from MIDI. Let's close this, put the track into record with it set up to MIDI, and we could open up the virtual keyboard right down here and play it from our computer keyboard or our MIDI keyboard if we have one. So we could trigger it from MIDI that easily. And we could also replace the sample the same way. Let's say we wanted to use this one. Just right click it, go to insert into sample player, but this time choose reuse active sample player. That's gonna replace the previous one so we can play it the same way. So we could reuse the same sample player but using different samples. We could also replace any of our samples as audio. Right now, I have some kick and snare samples. Let's say we wanted to replace the snare. We could choose it, open up the Media Explorer. Let's go to our snares and choose one. Let's say we like this one. Just right click it, insert into selected media items and we could choose to insert it as a new take. Now it shows up right there as a new take. This take, or this take. Or we could choose them all, double click the track, right click the audio, insert into selected media items, and then replace the media source completely, either by stretching it or not. Let's choose this one. Now replace the snare in the whole song. Before and after.
And we could also change our rate and our pitch right here. Let's say we like this snare, but we want to make it more high pitched. Bring it up here. Just the rate to be longer or shorter. And replace it the same way. Right click, insert it in selected media items, and replace it right here. And it replaces it along with the pitch and the rate changed. Of course, we could do the same thing on a new track. We could just choose a different loop, like this one, adjust the pitch and the rate, and import it to a new track like this, and drop it, and now it's imported with that pitch change and the rate change. Now we could also just import portions of our audio. Let's go back to our drum loops, and let's choose this one. Let's say we just wanted to import the first half of the loop. Let's have it locked to the tempo. And we could drag our cursor right here. And just have it choose this portion of the loop. We could trim it like this. Make sure it loops. And then just drag in from here to a new track, either here or down here. Now it just imported that portion of the file. And we can stretch it out by trimming it. And it just loops that portion we brought in, not the whole loop. So as you can tell, the Media Explorer is very flexible for importing our sounds, whether it be samples, loops, or even video, as we could stretch it, change the pitch, the rate, or import it to a sample player, or just place it in different sections of our song. So that's pretty much it. That's the Media Explorer in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.